So this dream you have to wake up. This is not a dream, this is nightmare. The dream I am dependent on something. This is beneath your being. Your holiness itself. I am not paying you a personal compliment to say your holiness itself. This is what I see. And this is not enough to convince me otherwise. Raises its voice, I can witness the game the mind is playing. Yeah. I can observe all the nice and clever excuses the mind is making up. I can watch this inner battle. But at some point there is a giving in. Afterwards, all this guilt and pain and fear was coming. So how to let go? How to let go of the addiction? How to let go of the addiction, you're asking? Or what? What it means? How to let go? Hmm? Yeah, how to let go? Because it feels that it's doing harm. It's doing. It's doing harm. And I can see it with arising and passing and not being permanent. But <laughs> but when it rises up and it has its way, then it's following. After this, guilt and pain and fear somehow. And I can analyze it. I can even um, like connect it to some feelings or whatever. But it it's all like analyzing, but not. Well, we have to see uh, which analysis you are doing, and if there is one that really works. If you want to call it analyze. <laughs> Analyzing. Uh, the inquiry has been a very good inquiring. Not as a painkiller, you know, not using inquiry like a painkiller or to, you know, who am I, 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 not like this. But even using this addiction also, using the addiction to go beyond it. You see, rather than running, uh, resisting, running, ah, no, 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 don't want to find some distraction, no, use it. Say, okay, come, I want to see you clearly for myself, what's happening. Because enough it has happened, and I feel what is happening in the body, I feel what, where the mind is going with it, all these things I can feel it. And then, really, whose addiction really is it? Really, you can do this. Because maybe some addiction is happening uh, on your own first. Maybe the mind is drawing you to connect up into something and then to fulfil the 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 addiction, but before it starts to raise as a sort of a, an attraction for some something, so during this time you are you can tackle it, you can look at it. You cannot win a fight when it's finished. It's coming up. You can take a look, and don't be so hard on yourself. You know, it's not a question of you know somehow. Um, we are looking at the behavior of these addictions as a measure of, in a sense, how I'm doing, who I am, and so on. Sometimes I say consciousness creates a problem in order to experience transcending the problem. It's the way in which it, it overcomes something. If you look at it like this, you will have a kind of perspective about it, but you must go you know, you have to find a way that you can go beyond it. And I've started talking about it this morning. That Maya can only get you if you limit your identification to a body mind identity. That I am this person, you know, with this particular identity, you know. You have very much a life where your identity has a particular context. You know, I live here, this is my family, this is where I come from, this is what I represent. This is what these are my ethics, these are my morals, this is where I want to go. 
So there is definitely a context. Then uh, Maya can have a go at you. Let's <laughs> see how good you are, how good your defenses are, hmm? how solid you are. Who can beat Maya like this? You see, you can transcend, of course, because those qualities they are also higher qualities. If you have a higher sense of who you are, but discovering yourself, then Maya is powerless. She says, "Okay, one get away." Hmm? I love what um, uh, Sri Ranjit Maharaj he says. Everyone is a member of the club called Illusion. Club Illusion has all the members, and it will not allow any of its members to escape and join any other club. I say it's a mafia. You know. <laughs> they will not allow club illusion will not allow you to get away. Occasionally, one break away, uh, and they call a rebel and break away. And this rebel is called a Buddha. <laughs> Or Christ, or something, <laughs> which is what we are, which is what you are, your innermost truth. And I, when I speak your innermost truth, I don't mean it's buried under layers and layers. I don't want to make you depressed. Your innermost truth is right here. All these words are being heard in its in its presence. You see, and each time you come into the recognition of this, this addiction has no. Power at all. It has no power. It only has power when you are momentarily distracted from the truth of who you are, and you are thinking, "Oh, I am just Mrs. So and So and Mr. So and So." Then the then Maya has come from Mr. and Mrs. But for Master, it's not coming. But for Mr., it is coming. So you have to be Master. How are you going to do that? You have to know who you are, also by knowing what you are not. I can point two ways. You can I can show you a way of dealing with this particular addiction, but I'd want to show you a way of dealing with all addictions. Because it's the same. One medicine, one size fits everybody. In in this what I'm pointing. Find out who you are, because presently we are under the idea that you are just a person. It is an aspect of your expression, but it's definitely a limitation inside your being. And we are functioning like this, and I want you to come out of it. That's called waking up. Wake up from this dream of limitation that you are just this person, and this is this. You have this problem with this person, and you like this person, and you believe these things. This is ignorance. You have to wake up to your divinity. If you are only human being, then Maya is strong for you. But you are human and divine. And your human trouble help you to discover your divine nature. The human side only wants a chocolate life. The divine side sometimes uses uh, the, the challenges of a human being as a mirror to recognize itself. So this is the thing I'm laying out in front of all of us. No, either you try to transcend and to win over something as a human being, which is fine. Nobody's going to to argue with this. Or the challenge and the chance, the the chance you have, is to discover your own divinity. We don't speak about these things. It's just I have to say about it now. But you don't speak after. Don't tell anybody about it. You just now you inter- internalize and say yes, yes, of course. In my heart, somehow, I seem to know this. I don't know how, but in my heart, the words that Muji is speaking, somehow something knows it. Something is saying yes to it. But if you want to continue being little me, becoming a slightly bigger me, then I say okay, all right. Let's see what we can do. It's going to be a bit of a struggle. Get ready for a bumpy ride, but if you want to say no, no, actually, this is to do with the idea and the identity you have as only being a human being. You are the one who is aware of the body-mind functioning, of the programming 
or so you may call it the conditioning or the programming we receive somehow all the beings are receiving some programming uh, you can live within the rules and the pressures of our own conditioning or you can begin to look and see but wait the conditioning itself I can observe who am I who is observing the conditioning find out I'm taking this addiction out of you taking I'm not saying we're not going to deal with addictions now we're going to find the one who is even even the one who wrote this letter the state of mind that wrote this letter is also a phenomenon and you are earlier than this phenomenon the phenomenal writer of this these words she is not bigger than you something is aware of that you see i want to meet this one because the one who is addict addict to something here maybe addict to something else tomorrow so okay let's not um, I don't want to meet you at that level because that's just an aspect that we can meet. I want to meet you in your purity, which I know, because you can't hide from me. This is the place I want to know. I know it alongside with you. And then tell me afterwards if this is valid for you or not. You are the witness of the sense of addiction, of time, of of feelings, of emotion, of memory, hmm? the seeds of memory, the information, all of this, you are aware of them. The one who is aware of all of this is that one touched by these things. Can that one be a victim of these things? I want to know. And then you can tell me, should I address you as the one who wrote this, or can we leave this aside? And and I say to all the beings, don't belittle yourself. Don't belittle yourself. You understand what I mean by this? Don't keep thinking so little of yourself. I said again and again, this body is a it's a burning candle, it's a mortal body, but an immortal being dwells inside him. And he wants to use this body to recognize its own face. He wants to use it. But it goes asleep a little bit inside this body and start to dream all type of nonsense. And now it's time to wake up and see when you wake up if the nonsense is still delay with you or not. Because when I look in your eyes, I don't see an addict. I'm sorry. Well, I'm not sorry. I'm very happy. <laughs> I don't see that. So I would be in disservice to the purity that I see to address you as though this is true for you. So this dream you have to wake up. This is not a dream, this is nightmare. The dream I am dependent on something. This is beneath your being. Your holiness itself. I am not paying you a personal compliment to say your holiness itself. This is what I see. And this is not enough to convince me otherwise. Ah, yes, yes, come. So something somehow is like I, I have to refuse to accept your definition of yourself. 
otherwise I am participating in something I know is not true. I cannot treat you as an idea, the idea you think you are, because it's not true. Hmm? So it must be dreaming. Hmm. Okay, come. After you come. Maya can only get you if you limit your identification to a body-mind identity.